Hello everyone. I welcome you all to day one of for Republic for day forensic steering for debate. Um, so before we start with what is going to be taught today, I want to give you a gist of what Indian Debating League is. Indian Debating League is India's biggest public speaking and debating tournament. We train debaters. So till now, we have trained around 69,500 plus debaters. We have participated and organized uh, more than 115 debating tournaments. This data keeps getting bigger every time every tournament, which means this tournament is also adding to the data itself. You're part of this data, um, so you should also be very proud. Uh, but what Indian Debating does, Indian Debating League does, is also organizing tournament, the biggest one, which is Indian Debating League every year, which is similar to IPL, like Indian Premier League, where we make state teams, but for debates, and you go against different states, and whichever state wins the entire um entire tournament becomes the winning state of Indian Debating League. Um, so this is what happens every year. And the reason as to why this is very important is because it creates values of integrity, nationalism, also team, uh, team unity, and so on and so forth. But also we see small kids actually taking so much interest in you know representing their own state. The one that you can see on screen is Sri Maharashtra jun Junior Category in 2019. Um, this one is Harish Natarajan. I really um, wish that you all get to see him someday. But um, but in general, just go and Google him. He's one of the biggest debaters of India of world actually. And um, we've also seen him, um, you know, go against AI and like actually beat AI in debating. So that's the goal. We want to beat AI at the end of the day, considering the amount of influence artificial intelligence has on all of us. That's there. But also the on the top of that, the idea is not just to do good on local levels, but also on global debating um, platforms such as um, LSC, Harvard, Yale, Berkeley, etc. So that is what Indian Debating League does. But and that basically means RDF is one of the monthly tournaments um, that we organize. So we organize tournaments nearly every month. Last year we or last month we organized a different tournament. This one is a different tournament. So. Um, yes, so this is Republic Day Forensics. We have done three editions of Republic Day Forensics, um, which is a unique tournament in India itself because um, it's one of the only formats or only tournaments which um, tries to incorporate forensics tournaments that are from USA. Um, for example, Original Oratory, um, Lincoln Douglas Public Forum. You have very little number of tournaments which give you such format. So the key day on tournament dates, therefore, are going to be three days of training session. Today is the first day of training session. Tomorrow is your training session and day after, which is 17th January to 19th January. Um, your training timings for debate is always going to be 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Um, on 21st of Jan, you have your qualifiers. You'll have three rounds. All of the three rounds are going to be online on the same day. Now, if you qualify the three rounds, which means if you do well, your average cumulative score is good, you will qualify to the out rounds, which is going to be 26 Jan 2024, um, IIT Mantra. So you will get to meet me and other ideal members and other people who are going to be there offline in IIT Mantra. So this is what um, the training or key tournament dates are that you should probably remember. Moving forward, what exactly are we going to cover in the training masterclasses? So considering it's three day tournament, three day, three day training session, the first training session is going to have um, orientation, which is what I already did about what tournament is, uh, what is going to be and what can you expect. Then there's going to be theme explanation and discussion on the theme, uh, which means I'm going to reveal the theme to you, which is actually all, already revealed. Um, but the theme is basically how we frame different topics for different rounds. Um, then there's going to be a little bit of format introduction. I'm, go I'm only going to touch briefly about the two formats and what we need to learn in the formats. The in, in detail learning of those formats is going to happen in session two, which means tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to frame speeches, how to make constructive speeches, rebuttal speeches, cross-examination, and evidence card. Don't ask me questions on what are these, and I understand these are very technical terms, but you will understand by tomorrow, by the end of tomorrow's session. So don't um, be scared as of now. The session three is going to be about a demo session where I would tell you actually as to how to make evidence cards. And I'm going to give you um, some 
um, some motions and then you are supposed to tell me as to what you would run in terms of the argument in terms of the um, the reasoning, the evidence, and also how do you make evidence cards in general. So I'm going to ask you to make it, send it to me, and then I'm going to tell you if you're doing it right. So that's what it is. Yes, a lot of questions in terms of what are these things, but you will know that um, in some time and in the due time. So don't worry about it. But yeah, this is what the training section looks like. Moving on to the bigger announcement of what the theme of the tournament is. Now, um, ideal tournaments generally run on themes, which means the topics are then going to be derived from that particular theme, which means um, theme is a general idea. Then we make specific topics for your formats and categories, which are suitable for your categories as well. So, which means if you are in Lincoln Douglas, your topic is going to be different if you're in junior category, senior category, middle category, which is the same case for public forum as well. Um, so, so, yeah. So now this is the theme, which is highs and laws of democracy. And John actually reminded me of the idea that, you know, I asked about what the, the what is the pun here? And I think some people actually mentioned the puns in the last class to me. If you are also willing to tell me, you know, what puns are, and if there is a very funny pun that you know, and you would want to tell me, let me know. Um, but the theme is actually a pun. So highs and laws of democracy is a pun, right? Ahil, yes. So a pun is when you intend to say something, but it comes out in a humorous way or an ironic way. So here the actual meaning is the uh, advantages as well as the laws that democracy contains, but it also uh, rhymes, should I say, with highs and lows of democracy. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. So highs and loss of democracy also rhymes with highs and lows of democracy. Uh, and actually, if you see it that way, the theme is designed in such a way to actually have both interpretations, which means highs and lows of democracy could be all the challenges that people face uh, with respect to laws and in general in democracy. Um, but highs and laws of democracy also means everything and every anything about law in democratic nations. So literally... Um, two connotations. One is ups and downs, uh, which is basically, you know, how the waves are. So ups and downs um, and challenges uh, by that are faced by the largest democracy in terms of making an implementation of laws, but also anything and everything uh, about law in democratic nation is going to be covered. Now, this is what I want to um, focus on. Why do you think we took this theme? Can anyone tell me why do we celebrate Republic Day? I will ask people who have not actually answered till now. Uh, Aditya. Aditya. Okay, Lavanya. Ma'am, Republic is celebrated because the Constitution of India was made. Was? The Constitution of India was made. Was made or something else? Um, Adya? Uh, it was when the Constitution of India was put into force. Yes. So there's a difference between when Constitution was made and when Constitution was put into force, which is why I the next question I ask is, when was Constitution made? <laughs> Anaga knows it now. <laughs> Wait. Somebody who did not answer. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, okay, Saki, go on. Well, 26th November 1949, man. That's correct. So why is constitution so important? Because constitution is basically the grand norm and supreme law of the nation, which means every other law, um, by law, regulation, rule, policy is going to be guided by constitution, cannot be derogatory to constitution, cannot violate the fundamental rights and rights of the constitution, um, which is why constitution is very important. Uh, but secondly, I think we also want people to recognize the essence of law 
and the importance of law in democratic nation, the way how different criminal justice systems are made, the way how different policies, rights, legal theories, duties exist in the, in the society. We want, want you all to know about all of them and be aware about all of them, which is why this is the incentive for you to learn, this is the incentive for you to research, um, because I don't think there's, a, there's an age for you to learn law per se, Obviously, there's different ways how you can actually incorporate it in your um, studies. But yeah, I think what better way than debating itself. So this is the theme, highs and laws of democracy. And your topics are going to be released tomorrow. Um, so yeah, this is what is the theme. Are there any specific questions on the theme then? Okay, no questions. Moving forward. So what is Lincoln Douglas? We'll start with Lincoln Douglas and then we'll move forward with public forum. So Lincoln Douglas is a debate before that. Um, can anyone tell me what are the two names that are associated with Lincoln Douglas? I think Lincoln, you would all know. So hint is it's uh, American format. So who do you think, which great personality do you think is Lincoln? From Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, it is Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> then Douglas. I think Douglas is the difficult one. My normal. Yeah, Anju, you don't answer because you already know. Anaga. I'm not sure. Stephen Douglas, I think. Yeah, that's Stephen Douglas. Um, yes, yeah, so there were a couple of series of debates between both of them, and um, which is why the entire format of one versus one debate came into a picture. Obviously, we made it more structurized, which is why it's a little different from what happens in Senate. Um, so it's one versus one competitive debate, which is very research based, value based. Um, you try to give your arguments based on logic, um, evidence, values, etc. But the idea is there are a couple of things that you need to do in Lincoln Douglas, which is also very similar to public forum, to be very honest. For example, you're supposed to give a positive case as to why your side is better. You're also supposed to give a rebuttal speech, which means you're supposed to list to why opposite side is not good. And then you're going to go ahead with your crossfire, um, uh, which is also known as cross-examination, because in this one, you're basically asking, there's one person asking the question and the other person is just responding to you. So you have multiple um, ideas here. So you would basically first present your speech, then there's going to be a rebuttal, and then there's, there's going to be um, a, a rebuttal too, but I'm going to give you the structure in the next slide. So the two teams that are, that are here is affirmative and negative. Affirmative supports the motion, negative opposes the motion. Now, I want you to remember three key terms. One is constructive speech. Second is rebuttal speech. And third is cross-examination. These are the three terms you should keep in your head, okay? Now, the first speech that ha happens is affirmative constructive speech, which is the first affirmative speech. Then once affirmative speech is done, the negative is going to ask questions to the affirmative. Now, negative is going to basically pose questions based on the case that affirmative just presented. So it's just going to be, have you seen in um, witness works where lawyers actually ask a lot of questions to the witnesses? So that's basically exactly it. So the consider yourself as the lawyer, consider the opposite party as the witness, you're supposed to ask them all the questions. But the way how it happens in court of law is that only lawyer asks the question, the witness does not ask question, right? The witness just answers the questions. So this is what is gonna happen here as well. Only the negative is going to ask questions, affirmative is just going to respond. It could be about, the case, it could be simply about a different thing. You could ask them to ask, answer the question in yes or no. You could basically do anything, but that's cross-examination. You're cross-examining them on their material. That's that. Post which, now, negative is going to give their constructive speech. So their constructive speech is obviously also tell, going to tell us to why their side is better, what are the benefits of it, and yada, yada. Post which, now affirmative gets the chance to actually cross-examine the negative. So it's going to be reverse roles. Now the affirmative becomes the lawyer, the negative becomes the witness, and then negative only answers the question, affirmative only asks the questions. So remember, the difference here is that cross-examination is only a one-way process, which means only one person is asking a question and then the other person is responding. In the first cross-examination, affirmative response. In the second cross-examination, negative response. So after negative is done responding, you have your first set of 
um, both constructive speeches over and also cross cross examination over. That's the only time your cross examination is going to happen. Only one time a cross examination, no more cross examination. Followed by rebuttal speeches. The first, firstly, there's going to be a formal rebuttal speech. Post speech, there's going to be negative rebuttal speech, and then there's going to be affirmative rebuttal speech too. So there are two re rebuttal speeches given to affirmative, and only one rebuttal speech given to negative. Now, the reason as to why affirmative is ending the rebuttal speech is because two reasons. One, um, the speech time split between the affirmative speeches is smaller. So affirmative speeches are considerably smaller amount of time as opposed to the negative speech, which means affirmative gets then another chance to actually fill, fulfill the time criteria. But secondly, affirmative, so there's always all the time the negative gets to respond to the proposition, which means it becomes really un, uh, unfair to the affirmative to always not get the opportunity to actually respond to your negative as well, which is why affirmative ends the entire debate. So just to rehash, affirmative constructive speech, then cross-examination by negative, negative constructive speech, cross-examination by affirmative, affirmative rebuttal speech, then negative rebuttal speech, and then affirmative rebuttal speech. Um, uh, is there any question on structure? Because then I'm going to tell you as to what is the speech timing. No. Okay, so this is the speech timing then. If you're in the junior category, which means third to fifth standard, your affirmative constructive speech is going to be four minutes. Negative constructive speech is going to be five minutes. Affirmative rebuttal speech is going to be for two minutes. Negative rebuttal speech is going to be for three minutes. Affirmative rebuttal speech is going to be for two minutes. And then any any cross examination for two minutes, which means the first cross examination, two minutes, the second cross examination also for two minutes. Um, now I want you to do a little math. Um, can you calculate for me as to what is the um calculation of affirm total affirmative speeches? Like what's the time that affirmative is getting and what's the time that negative is getting? Um eight minutes. Eight minutes. minutes. Correct. So both of them, even if negative uh, negative speaks twice and affirmative speaks thrice, they both get equal time, which is eight minutes of speech and two minutes of cross-examination. This is for junior category. Now for middle and senior category, it's affirmative speech five minutes, negative constructive speech six minutes, affirmative rebuttal speech three minutes, negative rebuttal speech four minutes, affirmative rebuttal speech two minutes, and then cross-examination three minutes all, which means um, first cross-examination. Yes. 10 minutes, yes. So both sides get 10 minutes. Any question on this then? So the first session was only supposed to be for the structural training and just for you to know what's the flow of the debate. Um, you'll get what you're supposed to do in each speech tomorrow. So this is for you to just understand what the structure is. Ahil, you had a, did you have a question? Yes, so I wanted to know uh... From which grade onwards does middle and senior category fall? Yeah, in? that's a good question. So, um, so third to fifth is going to be junior, six to eighth is middle, and then ninth to twelfth is senior. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Amira. Yes. So, is this the same format for a public forum as well? No, this is Lincoln Douglas. I'm going to move forward to public forum now. Okay. Okay. Cool then. This is public forum. What is public forum? Public forum also uses terms like affirmative, negative, or pro, con. Now, the idea is that affirmative of pro or pro supports the motion, negative or con opposes the motion. Difference here is that it's not one versus one, it's two versus two, which means there's there are two people in one team, um, which basically means if you qualify, you qualify the team. And if you don't qualify, you don't qualify at all, right? So it's very important for you to actually have good team team um, dynamics and uh, um, good teamwork as well. Now, what you need to remember here is public forum topics are always taken in terms of like a contemporary issue or a controversial issue, which is very new, right? Which is very like like which is very um, new or like controversial, crucial that is happening right now. Uh, but the idea is that you you also have constructive speech here. You also have crossfire. You also have the idea of rebuttals. But the, you have two more other kinds of speeches. One is summary speech and another is final focus. I will tell you what summary and final focus are once we will go to, to that speech training tomorrow. But this is what public forum is. Two versus two, very research-based, very evidence card-based. Um, this is what public forum is. Moving forward to the structure of public forum. Now, I want you to follow the, the arrows really carefully. So 
First is the, so there are two speakers, okay? I'm going to refer to them as pro speaker one, pro speaker two, and con speaker one, con speaker two, okay? So pro speaker one is going to give their constructive speech, followed by con speaker one giving their constructive speech. Now, both speaker ones are going to go head to head in a crossfire. Crossfire is when speaker one asks a question, speaker one from opposition responds to the question, and then they pose another question, and then the speaker one answers to that question. The idea is that it's a back and forth process, unlike the one in Lincoln Douglas. Here, both speakers are asking each other questions and answering each other questions in turns, okay? So first constructive speech over, the first constructive speakers are going to, um, going to involve in crossfire. They're going to ask you the question, answers each other the question, and then are going to do it until the time is over. Then there's going to be speaker number two from pro and speaker number two from con giving their rebuttal speeches. Obviously, speaker from pro, pro gives first, and then speaker from con gives their rebuttal speech, speech. Now, after their rebuttal speeches are done, both second speakers are going to involve in cross crossfire, which means, again, they're going to ask each other questions respond to each other's questions until the time is over. Now, post this, there's going to be summary speech. Now, summary speech is as it as it sounds. It is the summary of what you presented to the to the um, judges. Now, summary speech is given by the speaker one, and final focus is given by the speaker two. Now, first, there's going to be summary speeches. Post the summary speeches over, there's going to be grand, grand crossfire. Now, in grand crossfire, everyone from team can participate in, in questioning and answering the question, which means if speaker one asks questions, um, there's no bar on speaker two to answer, and so on and so forth. Post this grand crossfire, there's going to be final focus, which is by speaker, said the second speakers. Now, just to be clear, there's going to be first constructive speeches, then crossfire, rebuttal speeches, crossfire, summary speeches, grand crossfire, and then final focus. What do you do in each speech? I'm going to teach you tomorrow. Just try to understand the like flow right now. Is this clear? Any doubts? Okay. No. I will, oh, I'll assume that there's no doubt. Moving forward, what are the speech timings then? Your constructive speech and rebuttal speech is for three minutes for junior category. Your summary speech and final focus speech is for one minute. Um in junior category and cross-examination is two minutes all, which means the first crossfire is two minutes, the second crossfire is for two minutes, and the third grand crossfire is also for two minutes. For middle and senior category, your constructive speech and rebuttal speech is for four minutes. Your summary speech is for, and final focus is for two minutes. Cross-examination is for three minutes. Obviously, I'm going to send this PDF for you to have um, active access to it, So, but that's what it is. Um, that's the end of what is the structural training. Now, yes, Nora. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, um, which format would kind of be tougher? Um, I don't think any any format is um more difficult. I would probably say that um the only difference between both the formats is team management. If you think your team management is bad, then just don't do public forum. But I would always highly recommend you to participate in public forum because. If you're bad at something, you should probably learn that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, Amira. Uh, yes. So, uh, in this, in the first speaker, do you have to give any kind of arguments or something, or is it like Amira? That's a very good question. I'm going to answer that tomorrow because I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to involve in your constructive speech. Thank you, Gia. Um, I'm sorry, but this is not related to the formats. Um, as I've asked earlier, um, I am directly into the semi-finals, I believe. So I won't be able, uh, I won't be giving the twenty-first qualifiers, right? No, wait, wait. What do you mean by you're directly in the? Because uh, okay, so the list I got it it was that I I was on position one. Because I won three of my matches, like all three matches. Oh, so you've already done thirteenth match. Yeah. So why are you attending it right now? That means you've qualified. Yeah, that's why I was so confused that you're going all over again. No, um, yeah. So it's just, um. so we had two phases of qualifiers. That the first one was in 13th. The second one was in 21st based on availability of participants. Um. So yeah. if you've qualified 13th qualifiers, you're directly on 22nd. It's like six, you don't have to attend this one. Thank you so much. I was so confused all this time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Yes, uh, Manjur. Um, uh, this is not related to public forum or LinkedIn, Douglas, ma'am. Actually, this is related to SPAR. So, can you tell a bit more about what happens in SPAR? Like, do we have evidence card? Do we have research? Like, all no, the things. There's nothing in SPAR. So, is this just you giving your arguments? And it's also like very small. So, you just give it's it's a so on the spot, there are going to be three topics given to you on like proposition and opposition. So for example, I'll, I'll give both you both, both of you three of topics. Proposition strikes the least favorite topic. So for example, if there's topic one, topic two, topic three. Proposition does not like topic three. They are going to strike it, which means the only to two topics left is topic one and topic two. And then, this, then the opposition goes forward and strikes uh, one topic amongst topic one and topic two, whichever they hate. Uh, for example, opposition hates topic one. They're going to strike topic one. So the topic that is going to be remaining is going to be debated on. So that's the topic that's going to be debated on. You get two minutes of prep time. You give two minutes of speech. Then there's two minutes of crossfire and then two minutes of something. So that's um, all. Ma'am, what if we give a claim and then how will we verify a claim given by any of the participants? Yeah, so um, in SPAR, you're not judged based on uh, um, your research. It's oh. so purely logic. Oh, so Mom is spar dead. It's not that I'm just like just to feed his curiosity. Oh, okay, ma'am. Mom, and also, when will be the timings for the debate and uh, the yeah? So your debates uh, are going to start from three o'clock and it's going to end till at seven thirty. Mom, and for original oratory, yes, everything same. So um, what you're going to do, Anagha, if anyone is double entered, what they're going to do is they're going to finish the debate and then come back and then give their speech and then go back to the next debate. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hectic. Okay. So I want to quickly go over the last few clarifications I wanted to make. Everyone has to in all three rounds. Um, reason as to why it's even more important for debate students is because your wins are calculated and then your cumulative scores. So you need to have good win number of wins, but also your good number of scores. Um, the second one is that you're supposed to obviously have this, you're going to have the same resolution for all three rounds. Um, obviously, you can refer to the sheets, but giving full speech with no eye contact or contact obviously reduces your scores for manner. Um, so that's going to be there as well. Uh, but that's it from my side in terms of theoretical training. But if you guys have any doubts, you can ask. Ma'am, I have uh, a doubt. 